So hello everybody, Bitwig 4.2 is out and it brings a new API version 16 and not that much new additional functions but nevertheless some interesting things in there. If you look at the manual for the API you will see it's still sadly a little bit broken so the history is still missing and it says version 1.0 which is not true, it's 16. But nevertheless I got you covered for the new stuff. So what is new? Let's go back to the slides. First we get a function for launching clips with options. So you can now set what quantization you want to have for launching a clip. You can say from default 8, 4, 2, 1 and so on or 16th. And before that it was always using the settings of the global settings. So you could only start all of the clips with the same setting. So now you can, for example, assign some button combinations. If your controller has a shift button or a control button or whatever, you can combine them to have uh, different combinations of quantizations. And also you can have different launch modes. For example, you can say, okay, I want to have this quantization or it should continue immediately with playback or continue with the quantization. So it starts in the middle of a clip at the same position where the previous clip was playing. Another nice addition is that you can say here launch last clip with options which is now at the track which means it simply starts the previous clip which was playback. So we can quickly jump between the playback of two clips. For example with the button combination you can start a new clip and then when you release the combination key for example the shift key automatically you can start the previous clip which is some nice tool for live improvisation. Okay and I prepared an example for you how you could implement that so let's switch to the code. I created a little JavaScript program with the creation program which is part of Bitwig as well and I showed you that in one of the earliest tutorials so you can check out that if you don't know how to do that and what you will notice it says now API versions 16 so if you want to use these new methods you absolutely need to do that or upgrade your existing script otherwise you will get an exception that your API setting is too old. So the other things are usual stuff here. What I did is just look at these two lines. We create here a cursor track which simply gets an ID and we want to have eight slots in our clip launcher and that's the next line we get the slot bank and we want to work with the slot bank now to start a clip a new clip and with a specific setting and then we want to jump back to the previous one we will come to that part in uh, later on it's another example and why i did this in javascript is because javascript is nice for experimenting because you can simply define some methods and then call these methods inside of Bitwig, which is really nice. I created this launch with options so we can say which clip we want to start in our slot bank. Here for an example I just added we want to start here with a one bar of quantization settings and there's another method launch last clip which means we call that now on a cursor track. We say we want to continue immediately the playback of the previous playing clip. So let's check that out. Switch over to Bitwig. Quick. So here we have Bitwig. I just created four clips as an example. We have, as you remember, a slot bank with eight. So we're covered with this eight, but we are only addressing now the ones we have here. So let's go back to the code. We want first to launch with options. And this is a nice thing. You can just open the controller script console, select this script here, and then you can insert that launch with options. And we say we want to start the second clip, which actually is the number one because we are starting with zero. So this starts now the second clip. This is playing back and we want now to switch to play back the third one. So it's now running the third one. So the previous one was the green one and Let's get that code, launch last clip with options. And if we look now at the green one, it started playback directly here at this position where the red one was. 
and it jumped back to the playback of this. So this is working nicely and a pretty handy feature. So let's go back to the slides. Next thing is not very impressive. I also did not create an example for that. It's simply if you have developed a sequencer and you have steps in there, you can now move these steps to the left or to the right. And this is simply giving here with this offset. And this is simply the index of your step and of your row in that step sequencer. It's sadly not that impressive because the thing is, it still only works on slots. So this is no nudging to the left or the right. It's just moving a node from one slot to the next. I'm not sure if this is really handy because you could also implement this already now with just deleting the node and creating a new one, but maybe someone can have a use case for that. So next one is also a little bit difficult use case, but um, yeah, maybe I'm yeah I'm curious what you are doing that. So the new method is that you can create preset pages for the remote cursor mappings and also start the mapping process and delete mappings. The problematic part I think is that you still need to then use your mouse to select the mapping because it's not working on a controller. I at least have no idea how that should work. But let's show you what it does and how does it work. I did in the same file a similar use case. So now we create here a cursor device. So we follow the currently selected device. And from that, we get this remote controls page with eight parameters. And from that, we simply get the first parameters as well as an example. These are all global variables, so we can also access them in our test methods here. We have one to create a new preset page, then we want to activate a mapping, and then we want to remove the mapping. So activate mapping is just this new property, which you can set to true to activate it. You could also set it to false to stop it again. And removing mapping uses this delete object method, which is inherited if you go back here from a interface deletable object. So this might not directly be visible in the documentation that you can also call this method. So let's check that out. What we need to do is first to go to where is Bitwig? Here is Bitwig. Let's maybe stop also the playback and open up here the polysynth we have here. Let's open up the preset pages. So we see there are no preset pages here in the upper area. And we can now enter this method, create preset page, start it, and bang, we have now a new preset page. The next thing we want to do is we want to activate mapping. And this is for the first parameter because we got here the first parameter. And let's check out that. And bang, you see the first parameter starts mapping. And this is now here where the problem appears because now you have to use the mouse to click here one of our parameters, for example, that one to do the mapping. And then you can also uh, delete it again if you want to do that with the remove mapping method, which calls this delete object method. And here we go. And it's gone again. That is already for API 16. Not that much method and new stuff, but I think some interesting things, especially the playback of the last selected clip. And I'm curious what you do with these things. Maybe you have a better idea than me and write some funky code.